This story is called How the Leopard Got Its Spots, Tales from Around the World. Greetings, I am Professor Polka. Professor Polka. I'm an expert in the history of dots and spots and related topics. For years and years, people have been trying to figure out how the leopard got its spots. They've come up with some wild stories. And here are a few. One tale from East Africa says that two lions clubs, two lion cubs, let's call them Bert and Giggles, once watched some humans decorating their faces and bodies with paint. That looks like fun, Giggles said. Bert agreed. As soon as the humans left, the cubs started painting each other. Giggles used his paws to put black spots all over Bert. Then it was Bert's turn to paint Giggles. This one. But before Bert could finish putting spots on his brother, they heard the humans coming back. Bert was so scared, he accidentally spilled a pot of paint all over Giggles' head. The cubs quickly ran home to their cozy lion cave, but the mother lion would not let them in. You are not lion, she roared, and in fact, Mom was right. The half-black giggles had become the first hyena, and Bert, with his gorgeous spots, had become the very first leopard. That's not Grandpa Bert. Here is another story, thank goodness. This one is by the great British writer Rudyard Kipling. According to Kipling, the sandy leopard was so good at hunting in the sandy savannah that he scared off the sandy wildebeest, the sandy zebra, and the sandy giraffe. That is when the sandy leopard became the hungry sandy leopard. His former meals had fled to the dark, stripy, splotchy forest where they hid under the trees and bushes. After a while, the sun, which peeked through the leaves and twigs and around the shadows, darkened the animal's skins in certain places. The sandy wildebeest, the sandy zebra, and the sandy giraffe became the dark wildebeest, the stripy zebra, and the splotchy giraffe. When the hungry sandy leopard came into the forest for dinner, he couldn't see any of the animals. Their stripes and splotches helped them blend right into their surroundings. The sandy leopard disappeared, pardon me, the sandy leopard discovered their trick and soon realized he needed to blend in too, or else he could easily become someone else's dinner. And that is how Kipling thinks the leopard got its spots. And there you see. The leopard chasing the zebra and the giraffe. Another legend tells us that back when the world was new, leopard had no spots. Leopard loved to stretch out on a shady tree limb, wait for a tasty critter to come by, and then pounce. And there's a leopard, and there's the tasty critter. It's getting ready to pounce. Leopard was so good at pouncing that fewer and fewer animals dared eat leaves from the tree, from his tree. And the tree was so grateful to Leopard that it became his friend. If Leopard was hot, the tree would fan him with its branches. And here we have the Leopard getting fanned by his branches. Soon all the animals wised up. They learned to stay away from the Leopard's tree, so Leopard had to come down from the tree to hunt. And by now, Leopard was very hungry. You see him patting his stomach there? He looks hungry. But when Leopard came out of cover, he was easy to see in the forest. 
and all the animals ran away from him and hid. Hunting is such hard work, complained Leopard to the tree. If only I could wear his shadows, your shadows, then I could surprise the animals and pounce. What a marvelous idea, exclaimed the tree. Here, take these leafy shadows. I have plenty. Leopard licked the leaf shadows and stuck them on his fur. Soon he was covered in spots and could not be seen easily by the other animals. Now Leopard could pounce anywhere in the forest. See the, see the leaves all over the Leopard? And whenever he is not pouncing, Leopard returns to his beloved tree, which is where you'll find him to this day. There he is sitting on this tree. Although I do not suggest you go look for him. And that is the end of this story. Bye.